Hello, and welcome to the IDEM Review. The show where we have a good look and chat about the various television idents that we've come to know and love over the years. And for this instalment, we're jumping forward a little early to Christmas. Specifically BBC One Christmas idents used during the Balloon Era, from 1997 to 2001. Christmas idents are a tradition for the BBC that stretched all the way back to the late 1960s. During the 70s, 80s and early 90s, these idents became more and more detailed and in some cases more and more beloved by audiences, but 1997 marked quite a big year for the BBC. They underwent a major corporate rebrand and as a result, new main idents were created to represent the flagship channel, and these of course were the Balloon series. A deviation away from the spinning idol globe, yet it's still acknowledged within its design. Corporate rebrands didn't shake the old Christmas tradition, and in December of 1997, viewers were treated to the first set of Christmas idents for this era of BBC One, based around the 12 days of Christmas. Some of the 12 days were covered via short stings, but I'm going to focus on continuity idents. So here is the first. Eye-popping comic adventure for BBC One now. Jim Carrey is about to go green with excitement thanks to the mask. And little ones beware, it can be a bit scary in the world of weird animation. So this one is clearly based off the 10th verse of the iconic Christmas song, and see some lords bounding about on a space hopper. While there isn't 10 of them per se, it's certainly a fun visual gag to see what are usually serious figures in society doing something as fun and childish as bouncing about. Not much to see, but a bit of comedy nonetheless. Now moving down the days, we come to our second ident of 1997. A fantasy adventure in a magical kingdom now on BBC One, a never-ending story. Not a vast deal to see here, sadly. We see presumably a maid balancing a bucket of milk on her head, which contorts into roughly the shape of a crown and then goes back to being what almost looks like a static image. Now I'm not suggesting that the BBC presented us with an ident of someone actually milking a cow for example, but I think a bit more creativity could have been applied here. Anyway, let's continue on and on to our third featured day. Blue Peter in a moment on BBC One. First here's Peter Cockcroft with a weather warning. Again surprisingly not much to see. We see someone's arm expertly spitting some golden rings. Not five though, just two and we see what would be the equivalent of the BBC One balloon in the top right of the screen. Sure, this and the other idents in this set were made as placeholders between programmes, but surely something more creative to captivate our viewing eyes could have been done here? Let's move on and see if the last one from this set can do any better. And now BBC One Christmas Eve news in the South East. So here we see a very well-crafted partridge bird flying around what is definitely not a pear tree. It gets the job done, and the central icon reminds us of the old days where BBC One icons were static or revolving globes in the centre of our screens. Obviously here it's the substitute for the BBC One balloon, but nevertheless, if anything, this final ident of Christmas 1997 gives us a little reminder of the channel's history with idents, how far it's come, and a little festive reminder that Christmas is nearly upon us. So following on from that, let's take a look at the BBC's festive offering from 1998. There are three variants this year, so let's begin with the first. Leslie Garrett and Charlotte Church are just two of the superstar singers on BBC One Now in a fabulous festive musical set. Living up to its title, this is indeed generic. It returns to a central globe-like image, although this time styled as a Christmas bauble in BBC One's iconic red, with snow falling past all to provide a real sense of Christmas to the viewing audience. There's not much to say here, so let's move on to the second variant. A prankster returns to Metropolis with a flashy device that halts people in their tracks. Superman at 11.55, first on BBC One, film comedy is all I want for Christmas. This is quite baffling as to how little there is different to the first one for we have literally the exact same ident as before, only now someone shoved a reindeer in the blank space of the screen. 
and the reindeer himself looks pretty confused as to why he's there, looking around aimlessly as if to say, hey, come on guys, where am I, what am I doing? It's not very impressive at all. Finally then, let's take a look at the third item from this year. And before that on BBC One, just in case you'd like some ideas for your brand new power drill or paintbrushes? Once more sadly, nothing that impressive here. We see a couple of penguins adorn the screen, and then seemingly decide that they've had enough and just straight up walk off the screen, leaving us with the standard generic ident we looked at first. A very disappointing lineup for Christmas 1998 for sure. So let's move on and see if 1999 can do any better. Just the one general ident this year. Let's take a look. BBC One's season of Michael Caine films continues now with plans for a new business venture and some great ways to avoid a traffic jam, the Italian job. I think this one is strikingly beautiful. In a dark blue sky adorned with Christmas trees, we see the iconic image of Santa Claus take form in the stars, all bright in red and white waving a golden bell. It's quite the standout image. Furthermore, this is the first Christmas ident of this era to include the BBC One balloon, whose red and yellow colours mix very well with the Santa image. Overall, this is definitely my favourite from this era of BBC One idents. It looks gorgeous, the image is simple, yet so iconic and memorable, and overall, it's just a joy to look at and watch. A massive, massive step up from the two years previous. But now, we look into the new millennium, as we look at BBC One's Christmas ident from the year 2000. Saturday night on BBC One with Ant and Deck putting best mates to the test in Friends Like These after Jim gets festive. A very creative, fun little entry for Christmas. We see Santa hovering about a town and he begins to drop presents that are equipped with parachutes. As we pan out, we see a flurry of presents descending to their sleeping recipients. Like 1999, this uses the easily recognisable image of Santa Claus to captivate viewers, and it also shows that the BBC One balloon is present, this time being used as Santa's mode of transportation. I prefer the 1999 ident, but this one definitely will bring a smile to many a face, mixing Santa and BBC One to create a sense of unity and that Christmas is once again fast approaching. So to conclude this episode, let's take a look at the BBC One ident used for Christmas of 2001. Spooky moments with a friendly ghost. Casper is the film on BBC One in 45 minutes. Before that, the reassuring sight of Christmas with the two Ronnies. This one takes us inside someone's house as we see various toys float around via balloon and a fully decorated Christmas tree adorning the corner. We zoom to look outside the window where we can clearly see the BBC One balloon. I like to think of this one almost as a continuation from the 2000 variant. That one year later in 2001, Santa has returned in the balloon to once more spread joy to the world. Sure, we never see him, but it's a fun prospect nonetheless that he returns once more in the BBC One balloon. So, although not all of these Christmas idents may have been a success in the era, they are all uniquely different and showcase that despite major corporate changes for the BBC, their creativity, for the most part, did not dwindle whatsoever. The last three years in particular, exemplify this the best in my opinion, as some of these are still very fondly remembered today by millions of audience members. And so we've come to the end, but before we go, the final words from our broadcaster. That was all this week for this instalment of the Ident Review. I hope you all enjoyed watching it, and next week we'll be taking a look at some Idents from a satellite channel, very futuristic indeed. As for programmes next week, the Sunday catch-up contains an important announcement regarding future schedules and uploads for videos, so please do tune in on Sunday for that important announcement. So until next time, have a good week, and we hope that you'll join us again soon. Good night.